va parler maintenant du bilan de 15 années de l'industrie de l'open source en France. Et pour cela, j'accueille le président du CNLL, Monsieur Patrice Bertrand. So it was uh, about 30 years ago today that uh, free software was invented by a guy named Richard Stallman. Actually, the uh, 30th anniversary of the Free Software Foundation will be next year, but that's the start of the GNU project. And it's approximately 15 years ago that the open source initiative launched its own uh, m movement. Uh, so it's uh, interesting to consider these two periods. Definitely not uh, 15 years of free software followed by free so 15 years of open source. That's certainly not the way I see it, but rather uh, free software later complemented by uh, new drivers coming from uh, open source. Um, so let's uh, quickly take a look at what happened. Uh, uh, definitely, free software was not invented as business as the main purpose. It was all about freedom, as you all know, all about taking control or retaining control over the software and about sharing. And yet, and yet uh, what happened is we saw that uh, free software together with open source software, which ultimately is the same software as we know, would be thriving not in spite of uh, economic and business logic, not in spite of market forces, but uh, for a great part because of it. Um, so in 1998, a few guys uh, uh, considered that um, uh, free software could only thrive if it gained ground into enterprise IT because that was where a huge part of uh, IT was uh, happening and that was also where the money was. Uh, so they chose to tone down the freedom bit in the uh, tenets of um, free software and put forward the quality of um, the software they were uh, produce, uh, de developing and um, the control that one would have over, over the software, but still with the same goal in mind that was to uh, f foster a common good, soft foster the, uh, the vision of software as a common good to which we would all contribute. Um, so since then, that has been a, a major factor in the making of Floss software and indeed taking, taking it to new heights. I'll, I'll um, cover some of it uh, right now. And it's again worth remembering that even though the discourses of each side, I could say, sometimes clashed, the software was the same. And as the software was advancing, taking new uh, grounds uh, in, in the hottest uh, domains of uh, IT, both goals were reached. In the 90s, uh, business models were uh, adjusting, and for many, that's the way it happened back then. You would develop software because there was a need and because that's what you liked doing most. You would release, release it as open source software, as free software, whatever you call it. And why? Because that would make your software even more useful and because others could help out making it even more useful. And then once that was done, you would try to make a living, try to find a way to pay your bills. And um, because otherwise the whole thing would stop and then all you have done would not be so useful. You remember that saying, it, it's the economy, stupid. That's, uh, I think, uh, a Clinton uh, uh, advisory who said that once. What it means really is that when economic forces are pushing, uh, things tend to work uh, uh, in a very powerful way. Uh, and that's what happened with uh, open source. 
In the years, maybe say from 2000 to today, we have seen the rise of open source software vendors, for-profit companies. Uh, actually, you could date the beginning of this concept back to MySQL in, in the 90s, but there was really a boom in the, uh, after the year 2000, where it seems for a while that um, uh, all startup companies in software chose open source software vendor as a model. It uh, complemented the uh, tremendous uh, production of foundations and, and communities. It never competed with them. That's very important for one thing because they were aiming for other uh, domains and for another uh, because whenever uh, 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 a a for-profit software vendor is competing head-to-head -head with a foundation, it loses because there is um, um, uh, too much going on um, um, in foundation. Um, so it did bring Floss uh, software to new domains and these um, business models evolved uh, gradually and uh, ultimately many of them ended up having a closed source version in order to uh, get uh, uh, money back on their investment. That was, as you know, criticized by a few, but I definitely think that uh, it's a legitimate uh, business model and certainly has been overall uh, open source software vendors have been and still are a positive strong new driving force for Floss. Um, now as it uh, turns out some of them after a few years of gaining market share get to thinking that uh, uh, it has nothing to do with open source. Uh, we have a fantastic product uh, and um, open source ultimately is irrelevant. And I know for uh, personally a number of companies that I won't uh, name here that uh, had this uh, point of view and, and very quickly started losing market share uh, to competitors that were really um, um, uh, building on uh, open source and that would acknowledge that their product was great not solely but in great part because it was open source and it would only thrive it is if it stayed that way. Um, now when we talk about the business models of open source we often have in mind uh, the, um, the, the, the pure players, the how pure players make their money. But there is a, an even more important uh, business model in open source, and it's uh, called, I, I would call it shared research and development, and that's the model that uh, underlies the way foundations work and uh, deliver uh, some of the uh, groundwork of all uh, information technology. Uh, that's how the Linux Foundation works, that's how the Apache Foundation works, uh, Eclipse, you, know, you name it, or OpenStack. Um, they each have their own uh, specific governance, but the general pattern is fairly simple. Companies are sharing uh, some of their R&D. So they assign staff to projects, and for each day they give, they get times 10, times 50, times 100 value back because they get the work of the others as well, of course. And they also receive uh, side benefits, uh, of course, as you know, they have a say in governance and roadmap, which they never have in proprietary software. They get full control of their dependencies. Um, they uh, get innovation from the brains <laughs> and ideas of others. They improve the sovereignty over their information systems. So that's really the uh, model that's at the heart of open source, the one that uh, works best. Uh, uh, it's a good deal for enterprise IT, it's cost effective, it's, uh, as I said, it has uh, strategic benefits attached as well. And 
it has positive downfalls for IT. And that's uh, something that happens very often in, in open source, is that uh, there are not that many people out there that wake up in the morning wondering how they can do good for mankind today. Uh, most, most people really wake up in the morning wondering how to have fun and how to make money. Uh, but what's fantastic about free and open source software is that some of us in the evening find out that in, although they have been trying to have fun and make money, in the end they have indeed done good. And that works for company IT as well. There is uh, uh, incredible downfalls for the whole of IT and the whole of society. However, the only major shortcoming of this model is how to get it started. Uh, of course, we all know a few uh, fantastic uh, uh, examples of success stories, but there are huge swathes of um, enterprise IT where the very same approach could carry uh, f fantastic benefits, but nothing starts because it's incredibly difficult to get it started. A very important shift in uh, IT uh, in the last uh, 10 years maybe has been this change of driver. In the 80s and 90s, a great part of IT was pooled by software vendors, the likes of IBM, Microsoft, uh, Adobe, Oracle, you name it, and, and smaller ones as well. To them, software was a revenue. It must not be used freely, and standards were not that good because they would help the competition, competitors. Um, now, in the last 10 years, we've seen a great deal of uh, IT and of innovation pulled not by these guys, but uh, by larger software consumers that are the web giants that you all know of, the likes of Google, Facebook, um, and Twitter, to them, software is a cost. And um, the cheaper, the better. And since uh, their whole business was enabled by open source, it's um, quite uh, uh, compelling business logic to feed this open source uh, groundwork in order to keep um, uh, software cheap. Um, as has been mentioned before, Floss keeps on gaining new grounds. I got this flashing light, but actually I'm not out of time. I still have, uh, I think, uh, five minutes to go. <laughs> um, uh, keeps on gaining new grounds, um, and there are uh, uh, increasing number of domains where Floss is not just present, but leading the pack in servers, in networking, in cloud infrastructure. In, s in many clouds, I think the, 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 the more than 90% uh, of servers run, run Linux. It's true in embedded devices, it's true in smartphones, it has been said before. It's true in development tools and frameworks. Uh, and there are new grounds to be conquered uh, in the future. Um, I'll be quick on that. The global impact of FLOSS, what I mean uh, to underline is that uh, uh, the um, uh, impact of FLOSS has been huge in IT, of course, but has been tremendous outside of IT and all, all the way to our society, to our culture, to our, our mindsets. So I won't read you all of this, but uh, even things like the Wikipedia project uh, uh, dr dr dry, um, takes from uh, the, the open source um, uh, initiatives and philosophy. Let's get back to France. Uh, for um, 15 years of FLOSS public policies. Overall, in the last 15 years, French governments have uh, been uh, rather sympathetic uh, towards the uh, open source, receptive, uh, some of them understanding pretty well, others not so well, but always having uh, nice words. Action has not always matched words. Uh, 
Um, there was a strong uh, first impetus given around the year 2000 uh, and really uh, strong um, uh, consequences in terms of raising awareness. A glorious instant in 2005 when one of our uh, politicians of the time led the fight against software patents and, and successfully. An important date in 2012 uh, recently when the Prime Minister delivered a memo uh, uh, advocating increased usage of open source in public information systems. And all of that has kept France among the leading uh, nations in open source adoption. Um, it's estimated that the whole complete um, open source business in France is worth uh, 4 billion euros of turnover uh, with a cumulative average growth rate of 45% yearly in the last uh, 12 years. That uh, includes not only pure players, that is actually made up of 90% of disseminated throughout uh, IT uh, companies and end user companies, and about 10% of it in the hands of uh, 330, 350 uh, pure players, focused companies that are focused on floss. Uh, with many uh, trades. Uh, they are healthy and fast-growing companies, and yet most of them are still small to medium-sized. Uh, they are clearly the catalysts, the enablers of the wider 4 billion euro industry. They very early on formed clusters in order to work together, think together, act together. Uh, many clusters regional in the all regions of France and since 2010 these clusters have uh, created the CNLL which I'm happy to chair and represent today and CNLL is indeed cr through these clusters is uh, representing the pure player floss companies in France. It has three missions, facilitate the coordination and joint ventures between the clusters, communicate on the sector and represent the sector's enterprises towards government and public bodies. Uh, I'm uh, about done now. Uh, we've looked at the last 15 and last 30 years. Uh, if we take a look at the next 15 years, I'm not going to make uh, predictions. What I mean to underline is that although business logic has taken open source to new heights and new territories, the spirit of free software lives on and is very much uh, necessary more than ever. Keeping control over the software that controls our lives has never been more vital. You'll have a software controlling your um, medical devices that may keep you alive, software that decide if your car is going to break, and other software that will decide who you wanted to vote for. It's more important than ever that we retain control over this software. Uh, after the Snowden revelation, trust in software is broken. It is uh, alleged and quite likely, uh, frankly, that uh, many major uh, software used by many companies actually carry uh, backdoors implanted by force uh, by uh, secret services. And uh, this is a major breach of uh, trust in software and only Floss will be able to restore it. Shared R&D has still, as I said, many territories to conquer. That's my final word. Thank you. Merci. Merci, Monsieur Bertrand. On va faire une petite pause euh, d'un gros quart d'heure à un quart d'heure, 20 minutes. Et après, on revient dans la deuxième partie de cette matinée euh, où on parlera notamment de l'open governance. À tout à l'heure.